Welcome to B2B R&D Conversations. It's Ellen Williams and Craig Yaris once again. How are you today, Craig? Hey, everyone. How are you, Ellen? I'm okay. I'm ready to chat. What are we talking about All today? Right, let's, let's jump right in. Let's, um, let's talk, talk a bit about the future of marketing. The future what do you think? of marketing. What do I think? Oh, it's a loaded question. Uh, the future of marketing, I think it's totally in flux. I think it's not going to look anything like what it looks like now or what it looked like in the past. And I think that where we are now is going to be a huge driver to where it goes in the future, and, and meaning all the stuff that's being talked about today, the programmatic, the um, marketing automations, the CRMs, the social media, the AdWords, all that. I think what we start doing today um, to do things differently is going to set set the tone for what happens tomorrow. Well, I totally agree with you. Um, I do think marketing and digital, in you know, by its nature, is going to be very different six months from now. Um, We've seen an explosion in talk about uh, programmatic marketing, but but what is that exactly for the the average person? Is this going to really impact them at all? Are they going to care that marketing is different, and are marketers going to care six months from now? Are they just going to keep doing the tried and true, whatever that may be? No, I don't think so. Um, so with, with programmatic, it's it's all computer generated, right? It's it's the next step in big data. So all of a sudden we have all this information. What are we doing with it? And the programmatic marketing is taking that information and basically deciding what to do with it. Um, at this point, for better or worse, right? So we're we're starting to leave the hands that leave the marketing in the hands of a computer versus having a person make the decision as far as the types of messaging. But aren't we seeing that over um, uh, across the board, really? Uh, artificial intelligence is what's being talked about quite a bit with Facebook actually being able to determine who you are without any input by the user. Google is determining sort of based upon our history, what we want before we even know we want it. So it, how, how can marketers best use that without knowing their clients as intimately as they do and their customers well, or as intimately it, as they need to? Yeah, I don't think that it, they can use it unless they do know uh, their customers to that degree. So – there is going to be, you know, that kind of, of, of hump, so to speak, where programmatic doesn't work unless you have enough data to make it work. Um, but interestingly, some of the examples you gave are places where I'm already engaged. So if I go to Amazon, as much as they are marketing to me, I am a customer and I've given them that data and I understand I've given them that data. I think it's when I'm going to start getting marketing from places I may not have had such a, such a detailed relationship with, and they're sort of second-guessing what I want to hear. Um, I, think, I think we need to just be sure that it's not exclusively up to technology in order to maintain those relationships. I mean, marketers just can't sit back and let the computers do the work. I feel like marketers are doing that already. Marketing automation is the, I'll call it the buzzword of the last year and a half. Companies like Infusionsoft, uh, Marketo, um, even HubSpot. to HubSpot, and even to push the, the envelope here, constant contact moving into that realm with autoresponders. Aren't we leaving it to technology now anyway? I get to your website through an action, and I'm already into a silo, using that term loosely, that I may not have, not even belong into. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I think it's a slippery slope. 
I tend to agree. I am, and, and you're right, there, there are a lot of products out there, a lot of um, platforms and companies out there doing it already, or at least moving in that direction. Um, and, and, and that's back to what I was saying earlier. We're in a position now where maybe not a crossroads, but definitely where we're going to decide by our actions what direction it takes from an automated versus how much do we still have that human touch involved. Completely agree. I think we have to remember that we're dealing with people, not data, in the end. There needs to be a bit of that still human concept. Um, there's a, uh, a marketer in New York, Ted Rubin, who basically talks about you can't do social media if you're not being social, and social involves people. And I think we need to, no matter where this goes, we need to remember there are still people behind those computer screens that we're marketing to. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Um, but I, I do think that uh, as an industry, marketers have an opportunity now um, potentially more than they have in the past to be more involved with the direction that marketing takes um, with not only the, the programmatic and the marketing automation, but everything else that's going on online and the continued um, increase of its use from social media to email marketing to everything else. You know, people's, people will pick one over the other and that's fine, but in the end, uh, everything winds up sitting in our, our mobile devices that are sitting in our hands. And how much do we want to be spoon-fed information versus actually going out looking for information and finding things that we decide are right for us? I think overall people like to be spoon-fed the information. To be quite blunt, I think it makes people um, – it removes the decision-making process. And I think it's a smoother, frictionless move through the, uh, the purchase silo. I don't know. So I, I think it's a... So tell me what I want to buy? Exactly. We're bombarded with so many choices that the choice is nothing. If you tell me what I want to buy... It's easy. I can buy it and move on. Next decision. Well, I, I agree that too many choices are going to lead to no decision or potentially no purchase. Um, but if I'm, if I'm being spoon-fed the marketing and the products, does that limit my ability to understand what my options are and that there might be something different or more interesting to me? I think there's always something different and more interesting. If we spend, I'm a researcher, so when I go to buy a car, <laughs> right, and when I go to buy a car, I know before I walk in the dealership the options, what I'm going to pay, and which car it is. I, I've, you know, I've narrowed the choice myself, um, regardless of what's provided by anyone else. So, you know, that sort of goes, I, I think it'll be, it may just be person dependent. I, I think it's going to be a very interesting trip over the next year or two. Well, interesting your example of researching for uh, an auto purchase. If we really look at programmatic um, at its core, if you're researching how much, information is really going to be delivered to you that's variable. If the computers, the technology, the internet, you know, however you want to categorize it, if they're doing the thinking for you, you may continuously just be fed the same information. And so your research then becomes very narrow in scope where today research results are much broader. That's, that's true. Um, but I'm not sure how much broader they are today. 
we had talked about this new Amazon Echo, I think it was called, um, which is spoon feeding us results. So even today, if I ask Siri uh, here on my iPhone, my results are, are skewed. So you're, you're right um, in that regard, I think. Right. And I think so it's going it, to. It's starting now. And, and so maybe we are at a crossroads. You know, maybe this is the point where um, the technology is out there. It's, it's delivering marketing messages. It's delivering um, poignant information based on data that's been accrued about us. Um, and, and maybe it does come down to the individual person, um, how much they're going to try to move um, through the original or the initial results to get to something that would be more um, eye-opening, mind-opening, or, or just a, a deviant from the uh, original path that brought the original search results to begin with. Um. I, I definitely, I definitely think that's where we are. Yep. What, what do you think? Um, yeah. Well, well, I'm going to throw it out to the general public here. You've you've joined us for our conversation. Uh, what do you think? Make sure to comment um, below. If you're seeing this on YouTube, send us an email. E. Williams at B2BRND.com, C. Yaris at B2BRND.com, and we'd be happy to engage in the conversation. Yeah, because this is just the absolute beginning of it. This conversation is going on for quite a while. So, yeah, let's see what you have to say. Well, until next time. See you, see you later, Craig. See you later, Alan.